In this tutorial, we will learn about subsurface scattering in Blender, which is used for semi-transparent or translucent materials like human skin, or grapes, or candles. In a normal material, the incoming light rays get completely reflected from the outer surface of the object. But in case of subsurface scattering, some amount of light penetrates through the surface, gets diffused or scattered randomly, inside the top layer, and comes out in another direction, often with a different color. And this makes the material look quite different from a solid object. So, today we'll learn how to use this subsurface scattering. Let us start with a blank new composition. We'll delete this default cube. And instead, add one monkey for this scene. Let us make a smooth surface by adding more subdivisions. So go to the Modifiers tab, and add a subdivision surface modifier. We'll increase these levels, maybe to 4. This will result in a smooth surface like this. Next, we have to work in the Materials tab. So let us turn on the Rendered View mode. We can enable subsurface scattering in two different ways. Let us create a new material. By default, Blender added a principal BSDF, and it has got a section here for subsurface scattering. So, we can enable this option by raising the value in this subsurface field. Let us first change the base color to brown or something that resembles a skin tone. Right now, this is a solid color or a diffused color with no subsurface scattering and it gives a plastic type look. But if we increase this subsurface value, just by a small fraction, you can see how the outlook of this material changes and gives a translucent behavior. Let us increase this little more, near point 3. Now this gives a realistic skin tone. This subsurface color represents the color of the inside part, since the light is coming out after scattering from inside. Right now the inside color is this white color, which is mixing with this surface color. We can change the subsurface color to something which is real color of our flesh, maybe like this. And let us change the subsurface value a little more, up to 0.5. With that, we get this result. You can experiment with the settings for a perfect look. If you change the subsurface color, you'll get a different type of material. Like, this can be the color of candles or wax models, and even within this, changing the color here and there slightly would give you a colored wax. Since this truly follows the laws of physics, you can calculate and create any realistic material. Let us keep this color for our tutorial. These three values that you see will control the amount of scattering once the light rays penetrate through the surface of the object. The three values correspond to the three channels like red and green, and this is the blue channel of the light that scatters. This is the default settings for the channels. And you can see that the red channel has a much higher value than the other two, because this is how human skin behaves in reality, the red light is scattered more inside our skin. That is why this is high. But you can always change this, and get a different type of effect. Next, this is the index of refraction, which determines the nature of scattering, and a change of this value can give us a different material, because different materials in nature may have different index of refraction but the effect of this change is visually not so significant. Then, this subsurface anisotropy determines whether the refraction that occurs within the material is uniform in all directions or not. With higher anisotropy values, we'll get a non-uniform refraction or scattering in all different directions, but again, the change of this is visually not very significant. You can also use this subsurface scattering with HDRI lighting, so let us turn on the HDRI environment. It looks even better. But sometimes, subsurface scattering can also give you a faulty result. We'll now discuss about that. So we first need to add a point light source. Let us bring down the light little bit, and move it back as well. Now in the light tab, we'll increase its power to some high value, like 50 thousands. As soon as we do that, you can see that the light is penetrating through this object and creating this kind of a reddish color effect, which is happening because of the subsurface scattering, but this is also creating some color bands, which is the fault part we were just talking about. So we need to remove this artifacts, otherwise it does not look good. Let us go to the render properties. Here we have this section for subsurface scattering, let us expand this. To lower the artifacts, you can increase this jitter threshold. With a higher value, you'll notice that most of the artifacts are now gone, but we still may have some artifacts left in some places. 
So we can also increase this sample size for a better result. Maybe we can go for 20. And we see that the banding is almost removed from these parts of our monkey. Or we can try with a higher value to completely get rid of this. Now, in the beginning of the tutorial, we said that we have two different ways to add subsurface scattering. As of now, we have a principal BSDF, but you may need to use some other shader or some textured material instead of this principal BSDF. You can still add subsurface scattering to any material by setting up your shader nodes suitably. We'll now look into that case. Let us first delete this light source. We'll then split the screen into half so that we can see our viewport on the right side. And we'll open the shader editor on this side. Let us close this. So for the monkey, we have a principal BSDF and a material output node. We'll first delete this completely. And instead of this, let's say we want to use a diffused shader. Let us connect it to the material output node. So we get a material with the default white color. Maybe we can change this color to a skin tone, just like the earlier case. Now, in order to get the subsurface scattering effect for this, we need to also have some sort of translucency in our material. So go to the Add menu and add one, Translucent BSDF. Then to join these, we also need to add one, Mix Shader from here. Now, our diffuse BSDF should go to the first input, and the translucent BSDF should go to this second input. So we get this kind of a mixed color. We can also change this translucent color to something in the same range of the skin tone. Now you can see that it added some amount of translucency to our monkey, which is very important in order to add the subsurface scattering by this method. Lastly, we'll add the subsurface node here. So go to the add menu once more, and then add this subsurface scattering node. Now to join this with the others, as usual we'll need one more mix shader. The existing output should go to its first input, and the subsurface should go to the second input. And the final output should go to the material output node. You can change the color of this node, and the output color will also change accordingly. Let us take something like this. And this is how our monkey looks like, with a very soft kind of touch. We have the same settings here, like this scale factor determines how much scattering should happen for this material. You can increase this value and the softness will further go up in the output. Let us go with 1.5. And under this radius field, we have these values that represent the red, green, and the blue channels. We also have the IOR and the anisotropy fields like before. We can also control this mix factor to change this effect. If we increase this value, the subsurface scattering will further increase, and the material will almost turn into wax. So this way you can use the subsurface scattering and create real-life materials very easily. That's all for today. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.